is membership? Well, basically, at its most basic level, it's a community of people with a common interest or goal. When you're trying to get people to join a member-based organisation, it's not like selling a tube of toothpaste. It's not a case when you get someone to join, that's it, you don't need to worry about them anymore, it's all done and dusted. They're actually buying into a relationship with that organisation. Now when it comes to getting people to join, what I've found is there's two extremes that people come to with membership. Let me illustrate this. Bruce, how are you going? I promised I'd pick on you, didn't I? May I say, fabulous presentation this morning. Would you like to marry me? <laughs> but this is the thing so many member-based organisations do. They come up and on the first date, they try and get people to marry them straight away. When you're recruiting and retaining members, it's a lot like dating. Only a lot of people at once when they don't really mind what you do behind closed doors. But there is, there is the other method of recruiting members, which I've noticed that Rotary Clubs in particular are very good at. I'm looking at you, Bruce. <laughs> That's my question for you. But see, and if I'm looking and hoping that I'll get Bruce to join, I go up to Rick and say, gee, Rick, I hope Bruce joins. I really like him. It'd be great to have him on board. Of course, at no point does anyone ever go and ask Bruce if he'd like to be a member. In fact, you know that research has showed one of the most common reasons given when non-members have been surveyed as to why they didn't join a club or, a so or an association that they had the opportunity to do so, the number one response is, nobody asked me. Now this is something that you need to overcome. I mean, who here believes that someone will honestly be better off as a member of Rotary than a non-member? Stick your hand up. If your hand isn't up, you can leave. <laughs> if that's the case, if you honestly believe that someone is going to be better off as a member of Rotary, doesn't it stand that it's just in the spirit of friendship and good customer service that you would offer someone the opportunity to be a member? Now, this is the thing. As an organisation, you can do two things. One, create the opportunities for someone to achieve value, and in that you already have. Second is, you've got to communicate those opportunities to people. And do you know what? To my age group, you don't do that very well. You are, like I look at here, and this has been one of, my, one of my first experiences really to get involved with Rotary. I've dealt with many, many different types of member-based organisations, including Masons. But um, this has been an interesting experience since coming in here since yesterday afternoon, having the opportunity to meet with Rick and, and several other the Rotary members and hear more about what you do. You're unsung heroes. And you need to talk more about that, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But first of all, I wanted to point out something. Value, it's easy to talk about, but different groups of people are going to be seeking different value. And this is where we talk about things like segmenting your market. And what that is, it's the process of looking at all of the different potential members you've got and existing members you have, and understanding what value are different groups looking for. Now, this is, there's many, many different ways of segmenting your membership, heaps. I'm just going to share one with you that I think is particularly effective in the, issue, in the situation of Rotary that is in the moment. When you look at someone's career, it goes through diff several different stages as you, as you age. You know, when you start out, when you're in your late teens and your early 20s and it's all fresh and new and you're on that awfully steep learning curve and you're making lots of mistakes and you haven't got any money and life just seems so complicated and full on. I'm sure you all remember that. Looking up, up the, uh, the makeup of this uh, audience, I can pretty well guarantee you're not recruiting real well in that segment. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. Because where your opportunity is isn't necessarily in that segment. You know, then it gets a little bit further on. You hit your mid-20s to your mid-30s and you're in that growth period of your career. That's when you've, you've, you've kind of found your feet. You're still in that learning curve, but it's not quite as bad as it was. But you're starting families, you're buying your first home, you're getting your first brand new car. It's time is poor, money is short, and generally you're focusing on building your career. And then you come out of that. You come into the consolidation period of your life, and that's when you get into your mid-30s, 
and I'm definitely uh, experiencing that at the moment. You get into